right? Mm -hmm. And I and not being able to maybe move around also meant that you made meaning about that your sense of agency and, and what you could and couldn't do. So I'm yeah, so I'm really curious. I mean, you you you've had some relationships before and yes. they didn't work out. And you've talked about the Kaufman triangle, which is, you know, the, the persecutor, rescuer, and victim role. Mm -hmm. But what I really want to speak into the fact is the moment we experience something, we always go into the victim first. Then we do the natural biological thing is either fright, fight or flee. And if we can't fight and we can't flee, we fawn, we go into rescue. Yeah, we go into rescue yeah. or we freeze. We go into one of those two rows. And depending on conditioning that happens in the world, what happens is, you know, that's why it's often a very much a role of women because we're traditionally conditioned to be rescuers and put our needs second. Yeah. But you had to, from a very early age, put your needs second. In a way. Yeah. I, I also I mean when I had my strokes there was I don't know, it must have been a couple of three months mm. at least where my at the time seventy year old father had to wipe my bottom for me. Mm. And I so my mother that raised me uh, was killed in medical negligence. So he's been uh, he, he was just destroyed by it mm. and and this is what i'm saying about how clever i've got with my imposter syndrome so mm. i use that the unconscious stuff from my childhood i don't know about but mm. obviously you speak to but i i look at myself now so this this side of me doesn't work i exist on disability benefits i don't even have everyone laughs about this although actually there's a story on the news about these coming back but that's my phone um i have and i've only got a sim only six pound deal on that so i i've been dead so many times now and so close actually it's now perversely that the closer i get to death the more i enjoy it or the more i caught it but all of the decisions I made following my stroke mm. were based on not harming anyone else. So, when they said it was genetic, when I got out of hospital, one of the first things I, well, the first thing I did was pay for my own funeral. The second thing I did was elect a vasectomy, because my feeling was I need to declare myself out of the race because I'm not going to give what, what caused my strokes to an as yet unborn child. That, that doesn't have to happen. If I'd had the children first, mm. that's a different story. But I've been getting more and more disabled over the years. And I don't want someone as much as caring is, is, is something that gives them pleasure. I, I think it's a misplaced pleasure. I think it's, I think, not sure. So a misplaced pleasure. So, wow, what a, what, what a, what an insightful way of thinking about things. And what I'm, I'm kind of hearing here is that your love for humanity is so great that you wouldn't impose that on a child. So you took that responsibility to take yourself out of the out of the race. Yeah, yeah. And in taking yourself out of the race, was there a belief that I needed to take out all romantic aspects out of the race? I think so. Yeah. Well, not even I think so. I know so. So hmm. at thirty-five, I I was lucky to get an opportunity to. Uh, volunteer in primary schools which brought me back to life I owe children my life on well for three three occasions my life they've saved me mm -hmm. um, but I got quite strong quite quickly and yes okay so my look is a bit unconventional I've got my spiky uh, uh, collar I've got a dragon eating ice cream baby dragon with an ice eating ice cream on my top and I'm 50 I turned 50 on Friday so 
at 35, I'm really aware of a woman's internal clock mm. ticking away. Uh, and so I can't, I can't give you what you, I'm, I'm stopping myself from giving you that thing that you need. And therefore, as much as you might or might not like me, and as much fun as we might have, every second you spend with me is a second you don't spend with a person who can ultimately give you what you want or need. And because, so my dyslexia, so my internal world is so much more impressive than this world. Most of what I do is inside my head. Mm -hmm. This bit is the smallest bit by a long way. So I basically, and this is what I'm saying about, I construct beliefs. So the beliefs I have, there's firstly is equality. And I can't be equal with a person who doesn't have my um, limitations. 